Today we'll look at endocrine and cell communication part three. We'll look very specifically at hormonal communication. In the AP Biology curriculum framework, this topic is addressed in C1, which tells us that signals released by one cell type can travel long distances to target cells of another cell type. And then part one of that is that endocrine signals are produced by endocrine cells that release signaling molecules which are specific and can travel long distances through the blood to reach all parts of the body. So those are key pieces of information that you need to remember as we go through this presentation. Those are the things that you're supposed to be able to take from and then find specific examples in today's lesson that would help you be able to explain both statement C and statement 1 from the curriculum framework. Today we're going to look closely at the signal transduction pathway. We've mentioned it in a couple of the other um, presentations, but today we're going to look very specifically at the signal transduction pathway and the three steps that are involved in it, which are reception, transduction, and then of course the response. Most cells communicate through these three basic steps. And so we'll look at this pathway, um, particularly following, let's follow a hormone, and we'll look at specific examples of how um, communication is completed using the three steps in this pathway. So the overall pathway that we met in session one begins with reception, followed by transduction, and then ultimately we get a cellular response. So we're going to start with part number one. That makes sense. We're going to look at um, the ligand and how it is received. So the ligand is just another name for the chemical message. So it could be a hormone. And so if we use that as our example of a ligand, then we'll be able to um, track through this signal transduction pathway thinking of a specific hormone. Now the hormones that we're going to consider basically fall into one of three types. There are polypeptides which include both proteins and um, shorter peptides and then there are amines which are derivatives of amino acids. And then the third type of hormone that we'll look at is the steroid hormone. So when we begin to look at this signal transduction pathway, we'll see that the ligand, or the signal molecule in this case, is just a molecule that's going to bind to a larger molecule. So our signal molecule, or ligand, is going to bind to a receptor and start the process of the signal transduction pathway. Now the word transduce simply means to convert, so a signal transduction pathway converts the ori original signal molecule into a cellular response. This conversion is going to require several intermediate messenger molecules, sometimes they are um, second messengers. So the signal is actually converted or transduced, as you can see the, by the shape change illustration. And that transduction process then ultimately leads to some sort of response. So as we go through the AP course, you probably have seen pathways like this. And now we're applying the actual names to those events. And if you haven't come across them yet, you will uh, see very specific examples as we look at um, steroid hormones, for example, as we move through here. So the process of reception actually is going to begin when the ligand establishes intermolecular forces, not really a bond, but there's a, an interaction of the molecules, which is like an electrostatic attraction in that specific area that's the binding site for that receptor. Now those aren't um, covalent bonds or a chemical bond, but instead they are um, strong attractions that could be overcome with far less energy than it would take to break an actual chemical bond. And so this reception uh, process 
begins with that formation of this temporary union of the ligand to its receptor molecule. So that would be considered phase one. In phase one, the membrane proteins, it could be a G protein linked receptor, it might be an ion channel receptor, or it could be a receptor um, like tyrosine kinase. Those are embedded in the membrane. And then there are some receptors that aren't even in the membrane. They are instead located inside the cell and are called intracellular receptors. And that's a typical way for a steroid hormone to work. So our receptors for phase one or part one of the signal transduction process can be found either on the membrane or inside the cell. So let's look at those examples of types of receptors. When we see this image, notice the gray area here, though that is to represent the cell membrane. And so here's a big integral or embedded protein that's serving as the receptor, and it has its ligand in place. So that binding then is going to attract a G protein. That G protein then is going to start the reaction inside the cell. And so when activated, that G protein link receptor is going to set off a chain of events that will eventually result in a response. So that's one type of receptor is the G protein linked receptor. It is a in the membrane or intermembrane receptor. Another type of receptor is an ion channel. An ion channel, again, is an integral protein that spans the distance of the cell membrane, and it has a receptor site that is specific to the signal molecule or the ligand. And when that signal molecule is in place, we'll see there's a conformational or a shape change, and that causes the integral protein to change its shape, and that's going to create this channel where the ions can come in, and so that's a typical kind of process or um, mechanism for an, a receptor to have its ligand bind and then create an open channel. And then when the receptor is gone, that open channel will close and the cell communication ceases when the ions no longer can enter. And then our third type of receptor was the intracellular, meaning inside the cell, an intracellular receptor. We would see that kind of receptor in the kinds of, uh, of hormones, for example, testosterone, that travel all the way inside the cell where they set off their set of reactions. So testosterone, for example, is a steroid hormone, and that steroid hormone is going to uh, join with its receptor, and then together that receptor forms a hormone receptor complex that then interacts with the DNA and then ends up resulting in the production of a messenger RNA strand and then that's going to result in the production of a protein. So these steroids hormones are, are typically lipids and so like the hormone testosterone that is a lipid and it can diffuse through the membrane since that is a bilipid layer uh, where like a protein hormone, wouldn't be able to, to cross that membrane, and so it has a different type of receptor. So we've seen three types of receptors. So if you'll take just a moment to think about all three of them, you should be able to, dis to identify them and say a little bit about how they are different. So the three types of receptors that we saw in the signal transduction pathway Your list should include three types of receptors. Do you remember what they were? The first one we mentioned were G protein linked receptors. Those are membrane bound receptors that are uh, linked to a G protein in that once the ligand receptor complex has been formed, a G protein would then be attracted to that receptor and set off a chain reaction. Our second example was an ion channel receptor where when the ligand binds with the integral protein that's serving as a receptor, it forms an opening or a channel that allows ions to enter. And then our third type of receptor was an intracellular receptor 
um, such as the kind that would be involved with the testosterone pathway, where the steroid hormone testosterone being lipid soluble is able to go through the cell membrane, pass through that phospholipid bilayer and into the cell to link up with its uh, receptor that's found on the inside. So that's the first stage in the signal transduction pathway. The next thing that has to happen in the cell communication path is that this message is going to have to be transduced, which just means changed. The signal comes in and then something has to happen. So signal transduction is any process by which a biological cell converts one kind of signal or stimulus into another, or a process, we could say, by which a transducer converts one type of energy to another. But in our specific example, we're looking at converting one kind of signal to another kind of signal in that process. So here's an example. If we look at that G protein that was linked to the receptor we mentioned earlier, the G protein is going to go through the process of transduction as it receives GTP, replacing its GDP. Now we have a higher energy state for this G protein, so we would call it an active G protein. And then it will bind with an enzyme, and that enzyme sets off a set of events that's going to lead to uh, the cellular response. So that process of transduction involves the receptor protein binding um, or changing when uh, the ligand binds with it, and then a, a cascade of reactions is set off or started because of that. So here's an example that's a little more involved. We have our first messenger that comes in like epinephrine, binds with its receptor protein. The G protein is attracted. The GDP in that G protein is replaced with GTP, moving it to an a energized state. And it will then bind with the enzyme. And that cyclase enzyme then is going to result in communication with the second messenger, in this case the cyclic AMP, and cyclic AMP then will activate the protein kinase, and that protein kinase is going to cause a chain reaction and result in the amplification of that signal inside the cell. So that's an example of transduction. The third and final stage in the signal transduction pathway is of course the response. The cell needs to respond to the communication or to the signal, or then there's, if, if it didn't, there would be no need in. The third stage in the signal transduction pathway is the response. This is at the cellular level. It would be a set of cell activities that are going to The third stage of the signal transduction pathway is the response stage. In the response stage, we're going to have an activation of cellular responses. It could end up resulting in a cell producing a particular enzyme, or there might be a rearrangement of the cytoskeletal features like what would happen in, during a muscle, trans, uh, a muscle contraction. Or Another type of response that we might see in a cell is that a specific gene gets activated and begins the process of transcription. So there are, are lots of responses that cells can have depending on the particular pathway that's being followed. So just in summary, when we look at the process of signal transduction, we begin with reception. Reception occurs when a receptor binds with a signaling molecule and forms a temporary um, complex of the two, the receptor and the signal molecule. Phase two, or part, the, the second part of the signal transduction pathway is the actual transduction where the signal is converted into a form
that the cell recognizes and responds to. And then that response can be any of a variety of activities, um, including formation of an enzyme or activation of an enzyme. It could result in the activation of a gene, or it might be rearrangement of the cytoskeletal features of that cell. And so that the process is going to result in some sort of event or response because of a signal that's released. Now we looked at two kinds of receptors. There are, there are certainly others. We looked at one diagram of an ion channel receptor. This one's just drawn a little differently. We can see that this receptor is one that is going to let sodium in. Here's another a G-linked uh, receptor. And you can see that it, it also is drawn with a little more uh, detail, a little more molecular detail and um, that pathway then can result in um, cell signaling. The tyrosine kinase receptors uh, usually come in tandem and are associated with phosphorylation. And then there's the intracellular receptor that we were, um, the example that we looked at was the testosterone example. And so I wanted you to see those drawn in a different format, even though they're very similar um, in the in function to the ones that we covered, they are not exactly the same in the way that this particular artist drew them. So let's take a moment to reflect on some of the things that we've covered so far. In this schematic, which letter best represents the receptor? I hope you're thinking B. The G protein is represented by which letter? It's represented by C. The ligand, in this case, for this particular chain of events, is going to be A. Notice that the shape makes A the correct answer as opposed to one of these other um, ligands that may be in the vicinity, showing us how communication can be very specific. Which of these receptors would be the kind of receptor involved in the transfer of ions from one side of the membrane to the other. I hope you're thinking that it would most likely be a receptor like D, because you can see the closed channel and then you can see the receptor site. Which of these would serve as a second messenger? I hope you're thinking D because that is a messenger inside the cell. Our first messenger was outside the cell in the form of a ligand. The second messenger, in this case, was cyclic AMP, and it's located inside the cell. We have two basic types of hormones. Those that are water-soluble, so they're going to be hydrophilic, and those that are lipid soluble, which would be hydrophobic. They act very differently in their response mechanisms or in their signal transduction pathway because typically we're going to see water soluble uh, hormones are not able to pass through the membrane where lipid soluble hormones are. And you can see that that little cholesterol ring that's in the center or the core of the steroid hormone, it's a real typical example of, of how a steroid hormone is built. That particular one is cortisol, but you would see the same structure in testosterone or estrogen or any of the lipid soluble hormones. So in a cellular response pathway, those hormones are going to respond differently. The water soluble hormones get out of their source are um, secreting cell by exocytosis. They can't really fit or they can't really move through the membrane by diffusion. And so they are going to be 